Hmm, what's this? Hello, welcome back to The Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me once again for more Battle Brothers action. It's fully out. It's finally released. We are here. We are ready. It is, I guess, season one. The Freak Show is live and ready and going to murder stuff. It's going to be great. It's going to be glorious. I have heard back from the Battle Brohemians themselves. That's right. Overhype Studio said, whoopsie, uh, when they found out that my Bumpy banner is no longer working. So I may end up getting that back here uh, over the like after the weekend, maybe Monday, Tuesday. If they get it back quickly, that's fine. That's appreciated. I, I like it a lot. If not, that's not that big of a deal. I understand they just released the game. I'm not going to be selfish or stingy, but like you need to get this back now. It was just an oversight. Apparently, they didn't realize that that was going to happen. Not a big deal. So what might happen with the series, guys and gals, and hopefully you'll forgive it. I'm sure you'll appreciate it in the long run, or maybe not. I don't. I don't have any idea. But if it's uh, like Monday, Tuesday that I get it, we'll probably be on episode 4 or 5 by that point. And at which case, I'll just replay to the same point in uh, like on my own with the new banner. And I'll still rename all the characters the way they are. And we'll go from there. So the layout, the scenery and stuff may change. Like It won't look exactly like this. The cities will be different and whatnot. However, we'll just continue on like that, like it was always that way. That way we can enjoy our bumpy banner on the Freak Show. It's going to be great. Anyway, folks, enough babbling, enough talking. We are out of money. We are out of time. We basically, when this hits midday fully at noon, we will lose our uh, all of our cash. So it all comes down to this next battle here, ladies and gentlemen. The next battle is the battle for ages. So we're either going to make it or it's going to be broken and we're going to die a horrible, horrible, awful death. So we're going to hope that we make it. We're going to hope that we make it. All right. Cool, we get to see a few brigand thugs and a brigand poacher. Cool. Isn't he just lovely? He has no nose, though, so that's kind of a problem. Oh, sweet, we have the high ground advantage. Very nice. All right. Entros the Never Living. I should have probably removed his equipment. Well, we'll see. We'll see what we're going to do. All right, I'm going to wait for them to actually get a little bit closer. I don't think I want to attack from this far out, so we're going to wait. Wait again. Might move him up there once everybody else is in position. We'll see. I'm surprised that we haven't taken an arrow to the knee or anything yet. Gonna move forward one step. Can we check? We can. Let's just do it. Let's just lob it out here. Yep, and this is why javeliners, javeliniers, javelinians, they are the worst. Literally the worst. Oh, you're going to come down and, and... Oh, that's that's not cool. Alright, well, you're going to hold the line there, then, I suppose, friend. Then you're going to move here. Maybe there. Um, Yeah, 22% chance. Pretty small chance, but we might hit him. Eh, we missed. It's okay. Nathaniel! Oh, you're... Hmm... Move you up here. 60% chance. There we go. He's like, ooh, I better take a step back. That actually hurt. Yeah, it did. Alright, we're going to move up a little bit. And I sort of want to back him away. I don't want him to be where he's at. I think he'll probably move quicker. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'll probably move there as well. I don't know. I think that's fine. All right, so you're going to move forward. You're going to come up with the cleaver. You're going to attack javelin face. Yeah. Hit Ontros in the mouth. Stabby time! Stoichiometry, go! Yeah. That's all right. We deflected. All right, reload and another shot, 57%. Do we have the luck on our sides? I say we don't. Let's see if I'm right. We totally don't. We rarely ever do. He's going to have a bad day. Real soon. Oh, he just got flanked, and that made him a little bit unhappy. Gotta say, I feel for him. Oh my gosh, the Iron Cowboy doing work! What? 7% chance just to fire into the midst of them. Uh, guess we'll just rope you and stand here patiently, I, I guess. 
All right, it's stabby time number one, stabby time number two, and yeah, that's really about it. Um, I guess we'll pull this out. That's that's kind of all we've got going for us. Oh, now we've been slightly outflanked and maneuvered here, so that's a little bit scary. 17%, we missed everything. 7% times 2. There we go. Not the target we were aiming for, but eh, it worked all the same. Why can't we hit that far? Hmm. It's too far down, I think. The down angle's too much to overcome. We go with the shield here and swing. And we did some work. We're gonna step down. We're gonna take this dude's head off. They are freaked out by the flanking maneuver. We get to see if Hogarth the Weasel goes down to a javelin to the face. Does Antros have what it takes? Is he a man or is he a goat? He's a man. He's a relatively powerful man. Shield versus shield. It all comes down to this. 41%. That's right. Pitchfork to the belly. We're not going to use any more pew pew shooty action because it's just too dangerous. However, we are going to remove your face. Oh, we are not going to do that. Uh, we're going to attempt to hit you, and we did so. Shield up, of course. Stabby number one. Come over here. Javelin number two, 30%, and success. So Antros, with his crazy javelining skills, javelinian skills, worked. Good for him. Trenton Fox is the man, the myth, the legend. He is up there as the highest damaging unit we have. He's got one kill. Antros has a kill. Axel, the dark hero, has a one kill. But the Iron Cowboy, the law itself, has two kills. Though the damage is a bit underwhelming. That's fine. All right, guys and gals, if you don't remember way back in Season 1, <laughs> a long time ago, back in Early Access... I showcased my own stupidity and folly. Uh, oh, my, I guess, rushing through things. You know, you would see, you would look at the statistics and be like, all right, cool, we did this. And I got to see who did what damage and all that stuff. And then down here, there was no longer a continue button. There was a leave button, like you'll see down here. It says leave. Now, if you left from there, you would miss out on even seeing what the loot was or getting any of the loot, which is not good. Very unhighly recommended, by the way. So, seeing how bad I am, and I imagine other people might have complained about this as well, um, they fixed it to where it no longer says leave, it says continue. However, a few of us fools still would go and hit leave instead of going and clicking this button, which loots all items. Now there's an option in the option menu that you can turn on that will allow you to auto loot if you have space, anything that's left behind. So even if you don't hit this button, you will auto loot it when you're done with the combat, which is nice. Which is very nice. I'm glad they did that. And that's just to show you guys. They had this original plan. They saw things weren't going as well as they had hoped with the people that are playing the game. They listened to the community. And they fixed a potential or an actual problem with people being, you know, going through menus too quickly. Doing things too fast. Trying to get to the next thing over and over and over again. And they listened and they fixed it. That's always good. That's a good hallmark of a good developer. It's good stuff all around. I'll stop saying the word good. Maybe. Maybe. Hogarth lies dead in a pool of his own blood, skewered into a grotesque and panicked pose. He didn't weasel this or his way out of this one. You put a boot on his corpse and you look to your men. For the company. For all the men who have fallen. Nathaniel the heathen spits on the dead man's face. Let's take this bastage's head back, to, or get back to Mjarwirk. Or Mjarwick. Mjarwick. Let's go with Mjarwick, it's fine. All right, so we did that. We have a little bit of cash monies more now, so we can actually afford to pay our people for three whole days as opposed to one. And we are no longer broke. We return to Mirwick with the head of Hogart the Weasel. All right, Nathaniel the Heathen joins your side. Got a moment, Captain. You nod for him to speak his mind. The battle has left some gear worse for the wear, and some men got a good nicking, too. We can patch up both man and equipment while marching, but it's a lot faster to set down and do it. Of course, if we make camp, we should be wary of ambushes. A campfire in these parts can be seen from every which way. I'll keep it in mind. Alright, we have returned to Mirwick. The company returns to Mirwick as victors, their heads held much higher this time. 
The Freak Show are not the size that they once were, but they're still a force to be reckoned with, as Hogart learned in his final moments. You carry his head in a sack that you empty in front of Toby. Or I guess in front of Toby's feet. Uh, he jumps back, but the healer quickly picks the head up, stares at it, and nods. Toby approaches the brigand's bloodied face and eyes it carefully. Yes, yes, this is his ugly muggle, right? Servants, pay this man his money. Coin in hand, you raise your voice to the men. As long as there is blood coursing through our veins, as long as we can hold sword and shield, there shall stand our company. All through the realm, people will know the Freak Show. The men cheer. Trenton the Fox puts his hand on your shoulder. You did well, Captain. No matter where you lead us, the men will follow you as brothers in battle or... <laughs> Battle Brothers. Alright, so there we have it. As Brothers! Alright, so we've accomplished our first full mission now. We are rocking our seven people. We're relatively strong. We have light wounds that aren't going to do too much. We're very, 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 very happy with how things went. We're all feeling quite euphoric. We managed to snag ourselves a short sword, a falchion, which is a pretty decent sword. And we got some salt and all sorts of other various things. It's it's a good time to be alive, ladies and gents. We didn't have a shield break or anything like that. We did end up using our our net, but we can always put the net back on him. I'm going to take his thing away because I do want him to punch people in the face. That is his goal in life right now. He is a face puncher. Antros, the never living. That's his only job. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to hold alt... Alt and right click, and it's going to repair up the remaining equipment that we have here. We're going to sell this. I'm probably going to sell the short sword as well. So, what I think I'm going to do is we're going to leave just for a moment or two here. And once our tools go down, there it is. All right, now we're going to go back in and we're going to sell off our short sword, we're going to sell off the wooden stick. We're going to keep the shields and the other stuff as well. Alright, I don't believe there's going to be any more folks that we can have. We sell this for 340 It's worth 340 We can sell it for 380 That's a good deal. Uh, the way this works, and I know I've done several, several seasons of this, several videos. There may be people joining us for the very first time in this season since the full release, checking out the game. Welcome to all you newcomers, and thank you all you loyal people who are here for seven seasons plus. I appreciate it, and I'm glad you guys are here and along for the ride. Anyhow, I'll do a quick explanation. It's basic stuff, guys. I mean, you kind of already know it, but I'm just going to go over it real quick for anyone who doesn't know. All right, when you look at stuff, it's going to tell you what it's worth. You see it up above. It says sell for, and then above that it says worth. The worth is pretty much the medium. That's like what the thing's worth, so 340 if you go to a place and you can only sell it for 280, that's not great. But this one sells it for 380. While you might be able to get a better price elsewhere, maybe this is still good. So we're going to sell this here. Now, if we take a look at the food, the ground grains are worth 50, but they are sold. We can buy them for 54. That's again, it's a small increase, but that's still that's not great. Generally, smaller towns are good for food and like local items like that. Where larger towns are better for equipment and other various things of that nature. Uh, trade goods come there, you can sell them for hire, I mean it's all sorts of stuff. You gotta really pay attention to the economy while running around. I am not great at that. Admittedly, I'm not gonna be the end-all be-all when it comes to that. So you'll have to forgive me. I know I'll make mistakes, do bad deals and stuff. But in general, I try to adhere to things. Now if we take a look at the fish, the fish is actually one cheaper than it's worth. So this would be a good place to buy fish. Now, I don't believe the food, like having multiple different instances of food, makes any difference in Battle Brothers like it does in Mount and Blade, for instance. Having a variety of food gives you a, a benefit, a bonus. I don't believe that's the case in Battle Brothers. If it is, someone correct me, because I honestly don't know. I don't ever remember reading that. But different places just sell them for different prices. Sometimes you can find stuff really cheap, and you can sell them at other places that are, would sell them normally for more expensive you get a little bit of extra money out of it that way. Just stuff like that, small things. And here the medical supplies are actually a bit cheaper too. But if we take a look at the tools, way more expensive. 200's the worth. They're selling it for 295. That's not worth it at all. Same thing with the ammunition at 100. It's selling for 148. So in short, not the best place to buy most of the stuff. We have enough food for now. I don't think we need to buy any more. 
So that's great. Let's go look a uh, look at our crew here and level up Trenton the Fox. He is the first man to level up on the crew. We're gonna go over here to perks. Now people may debate this. I don't know how they could. Um, maybe they don't. Maybe everybody agrees with me here. There is only one perk that is worth getting at level one, in my opinion. Now again, people may disagree, and that's fine. But this, to me, is the greatest perk to get. Now. There's only one caveat to that. If you weren't looking to level up your guys as quickly as possible, and you don't care about like maximizing your first group of guys to get them to be as strong as they possibly can, then I would say the first, first level, the thing you should get is this, student. You gain 20% additional experience from battle. It will allow you to level up quicker, making the lower tier guys a higher level quicker will make them viable for a bit. So that's not terrible because most of the time you're going to slowly replace your crew as you go through. So I don't disagree that that would be ideal for your first level if you're going to go that route. I personally am not going to go that route. So my opinion, fast adaptation is literally the best skill in the entire game. It basically means if you miss your first attack, say you go and attack this guy, you have a 10% chance. You're like, oh, well, poo. The second time you attack him, you have an 18% chance. The next time you attack him, you have a 26% chance and so on and so forth until you actually hit him. Then it resets back down to the 10%. So it's going to mean that over time, you are eventually always going to hit somebody. It's a, it's a really good skill. They've reworked it a few times. I think they've lowered the bonus a bit too because it used to be more because it's such a pivotal, important skill. So fast adaptation, my number one choice for all of my characters. It's just, to me, it's literally the best skill in the game. I would like it to do more, but then it would just probably be a little bit too OP. All right, so there you go, guys and guys. You get to do a perk. The first level, well, technically you're level two. Um, you get to get one perk, and then you get to go down to the next tier, and the next tier, and so on and so forth as you level up. You can pull multiples from each tier as you go through. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. There's even weapon specialization tier here, which is pretty nice. That was something that they added fairly recently. To the game good stuff all around anyway and then the other thing you get to do whenever you level up is come over here and you will get to see your level up uh, selections here each of these stats have various different things you take a look this is health hit points obviously there's really no need to explain that that's always good to get especially on frontliners if you can maximum fatigue is basically as you go through and you fight in each battle that you fight you start at like your maximum you know, at zero fatigue and then the highest you can get is up to, where is it on here? I'm sorry, there's a there's a fatigue thing over here. I'm not sure where it is. It's, I think it's this one, 73. So once you hit 73, you can't do anything else. It, it resets a little bit each, each turn you take, but when you move and you do actions, it goes up. And eventually you get to the point where you can only swing once or you can't swing at all and you just have to defend or something along those lines as you go through. So increasing this allows you to do more actions. And it lets you... Um, Let's see here, let's just read what it says. Maximum fatigue is the amount of fatigue a character can accumulate before being unable to take any more actions and having to recuperate. It is reduced by wearing heavy equipment, especially armor. So everything that you throw on your Battle Brothers, uh, weapons, equipment, uh, armor, all that stuff, it adds to the fatigue. So your, his normal fatigue would be 96, as it shows right here. However, with all of his equipment on, it's 73, which shows down here. It's a pretty important skill to have, stat especially. Later on, there's some things that allow you to do, like double attacks and things like that. So it's also pretty important. Now, one of my least favorite one is Resolve. Resolve is kind of the morale of the entire group, well, of that character, but you can get a skill that will allow you to share that morale with nearby units. And essentially, you're going to be less likely to run away, you're not going to get as freaked out when people surround you like we saw. We kind of switched flags a little bit there. It's good to have Resolve, but I feel like it's one of the less important skills right now. I don't know if, or stats right now. I don't know if it's something that they're going to change in the future, or if in the new version, the released version, it is more important. We'll have to see. But I find that that one, usually, most of the time, you can just ignore. But we'll see. We'll see. Then you have Initiative, which is basically the higher it is, the faster you move, which, of course, is also reduced by equipment strain. Then melee attack, ranged attack, melee defense, and ranged defense. Those are pretty self-explanatory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the two melee skill. It's not great, but it is what it is. Uh, if it was one, I wouldn't get it this time. I would try to maximize my gains and my stats for everything else. And I'm also going to go with uh, four hit points and four to the max fatigue. 
Sorry about that, folks. Now, normally you wouldn't know what your level up was going to be. It was uh, all randomized, and it still is. It's all random. Each level, it's going to be different. So this time we got plus four hit points. Maybe next time we get plus one hit points, but we get plus four melee skill and plus four melee defense. So it's all randomized. Before, it was all hidden random, so you would select it. You'd be like, oh, no, that was a terrible choice. It's only one point, which would cause people to just quick save before leveling up and then just go through and find the best combination. They decided, well, instead of doing that, let's just show them what the random stats are and let them go that way. That saved a lot of people a step, and it made it a little bit more transparent and visible when you leveled up. So that was a good change. I do like that a lot. All right, and that's pretty much all I really want to talk about with all this stuff for right now. There's a lot to the game. I want to kind of explain it as we go, but I don't want to get bogged down too much with explaining. I want to actually have some fun and play it which I know you guys are going to want me to do as well. Again, many of you have been here for a very long period of time. You've watched me play tons and tons of Battle Brothers. So, yeah. I get it. I get it. But I don't want to completely alienate any of the new people either. That's right. we got to try to do everything we possibly can. All right. So we're going to head over to Dolmen, and we're going to see if we can't find another contract. Now, normally in the city screens, the contracts will appear in the top left as like a scroll or a crest or something along those lines. And you'll be able to choose if you want to pick it up and take the quest and do it or not. Now, as we go through, I'm going to read most of the quests because, you know, they spent the time to write them and everything else. And they're done well. I like them and they're, you know, it's enjoyable. But as you get on further into the game, you'll see most of the quests and then you're just going to start picking out the important information that you need from them. So it may be by halfway through the series, I just want to streamline things and I might stop reading some of them. But I'll always give you guys a chance to pause and read if you want to. So that way it still lets me flow, you guys can still read it, and you can still enjoy the wonderful writing and everything else. So that's kind of that's kind of how we're going to you know, approach this whole subject. Now nighttime kind of sucks to go to towns because the marketplace isn't there, you can't hire people, most of the places are closed, the tavern's open, which you can go and get some exciting alcohol into your people and then they're like yeah mead it's sweet and they're all super excited it's good however we can always grab our contracts so let's go take a look here someone is looking to hire mercenaries that would be us we're the mercenaries all right we find valdemar the trade master closing up a box he quickly glances up as though he's been caught with his pants down <gasps> sell swords thank you for coming he locks the latches with a few quick snaps then he puts or pats the crate a few times, even leans on it as though it needed one more fat latch. This here cargo has to be delivered safely to Otterndorf. A man by the name of Ingolf of the town is waiting for it. I do not believe the task will be easy as the cargo is rather precious to certain people who'd go to great lengths to acquire it. Which is why I'm turning to a man of your experiences. Are you interested in doing this for me? Let's talk money. Now, here's the thing. Always agree to whatever they want in the first part, because if you disagree, you basically just chop it off right there, and you don't ever know what the payout's going to be or anything else. You can still... You can still get through all the negotiations and everything, and then decide not to take it. So basically, you finalize it, you know what's there, you know what's up for offer, you know what you're going to get paid and what the quest is, but you can opt at the end of it not to take it right then, see what other contracts are available, and then choose the best one, because I believe you can only have one going at any one time. So, just something to think about, just something to be aware of. He gesticulates with his hands, pointing at his fingers as if counting something, but it means nothing to you. Judging from experience, this is good payment for the task. It's 190 crowns when the contract is done. Um, you can accept the offer, or you can try to haggle. Sometimes people will get mad at you. Uh, since we're kind of, you know, reeling from a loss, you know, we just got beat down, but then we were successful, I feel like we're just going to flat accept the offer right now. You can always wheel and deal. I don't know that there's necessarily a negative thing to doing that, but I'm just going to accept the offer straight up. All right, it wants me to deliver the cargo to Anterndorf in the northwest. 190. So here we can accept it, or we can say I need some time to think about it. Uh, if you do that one, this is the one that you'll want to choose, because look, it's there. Now you know exactly what's there, you just get right back to the screen, you've already done all the work to this, and now say you're like, alright, you know what, there's no other jobs that are available right now, or one that we can safely take, so we're going to go and we're going to accept this contract. 
So that's what we're going to do. We're going to hop out. I'm going to pause with spacebar, and we're going to go take a look. It's right there. So what we're going to do is the, the PC, or sorry, the AI, the computer has its own... The, the AI for your movement has its own uh, pathing thing. It tries to find the quickest... Safe, well, not necessarily safe. It's the quickest path to whatever destination you click on. So we're going to click over here on Otterndorf. It's not going to be a straight line. It's going to go. It's going to travel over roads, cut corners where and when it's best. And it looks like we're not going to be heading across the water. I don't know if we can, to be honest. Oh, during camp. Sitting and jesting with the men while they check their kit, hone their blades, and mend their armor, your, war your mind wanders to thinking about new ideas for improving the company and its reputation across the lands. What is your conclusion, and what do you tell the men? Oh, here we go. This is something new. I haven't seen this before. We need allies. Forging a bond of friendship and trust with one of the towns will get company better prices, more volunteers, and more steady work. We shall get the company's strength back to a dozen men. It will make us a formidable force again. It will allow us to take on more profitable work. Um, I'm a little sad that the music stopped. It should be looped. It's weird. I guess I'm going to do that. We're going to get our uh, our people back up to full strength with 12 people. I mean, that's your ultimate goal anyway, right? Is to get up, well, maybe not your ultimate, ultimate goal, but it's one of your goals. I'm going to stop over at this town to see what's here real quick. So you see, since we're already in a contract, this one's locked to us. But let's go take a look at who we can hire here. Oh, we have some pretty good looking dudes here. I mean, we can't get any of them right now, but... There's a few that we haven't seen before. A day tailor is a pretty good guy. He's used to all kinds of physical work. But he's kind of, he's like um, a jack of all trades, so to speak. Not necessarily a good one either. Uh, the militia is usually pretty good. He's, he comes with pretty good equipment. That's why his price is as high as it is. Then this is a witch hunter. Yeah. Pretty decent ranged unit. And he's already a higher level, which is nice. Then we have over here a deserter. Has some military background. He's... He's okay. He's not great. He's better than, like, the untrained people. And then we have another messenger. Don't really want to hire anyone right now anyway, so it's fine. But let's go take a peek at our equipment needs here. This looks like before, remember, it was 54 to buy the grain at the other place. This one's 51 Still not the greatest price, but it's not bad. And here we can actually get tools for two, two higher... We don't need it yet, so I'm not going to get it. But that's actually a decent price. But here, the medical supplies are much higher. So this is an okay price for tools. It's something to think about. I'm going to buy some food, just in case. Is there anything else here? We have a weaponsmith and an armorer. Okay, let's check out the weaponsmith. You'll see some of the really cool weapons here. Throwing axes. We have javelins again. We have some pikes, which are pretty good. This is a, a long axe, it's also a pole arm. So just like the, the pitchfork, this is a really, really good one here. A big, nice, amazing, super awesome, great axe, a two-handed axe for frontline combat, that's good. This is a one-handed, really, really good fighting axe. Some really good stuff here. Unfortunately, all of it is pretty much outside of our range right now that we can actually afford. And let's go take a look at the armorer as well. We may be able to find some okay equipment here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to buy one of those. It's a bit much, but we're going to get it anyway. All right, so that that's it. That's all we're going to get. I'm going to... No, I'm going to keep that. All right, so we got ourselves the padded leather, which is better than the rugged surcoat. But keep the blanket on you. All right, you get new equipment, my friend. I know, you're pretty excited. I'm pretty excited for you as well. You can have this as well. And there we go. All right, so small upgrade there. It's it's a thing. It's fine. All right, let's continue our adventure. But you know what, guys and gals, looking at the time, we are out of time for episode two. There was a little bit more explanation, and I hope it helped you guys. If you're you know again new to the channel or new to Battle Brothers in general, I'm not going to make it a full 100% tutorial uh, series, but I'm going to at least try to let you guys know what's going on, explain some of my motivations and how things work. So, by the time you're done watching my series, if you were on the fence, first off, you should immediately go buy the game because it's amazing and you're missing out. Second, uh, when you are done watching my series, you should have a pretty good understanding and idea of how to play and, and what to do and what not to do, maybe. Uh, whether it's because I did stupid things and got myself killed, or because I've explained how not to do stupid things so you can keep yourselves alive. 
Either way, folks, that's it for episode two. I want to thank you all for hanging out and stopping by and watching some Battle Brothers and joining me in this wonderful endeavor. I have my list up for the future Battle Brothers to join, so there will be plenty more coming. And since there is an end game, I don't know how long it's going to take, but we will probably be swapping out people and all sorts of other stuff. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, guys and gals. Until the very next episode, my name's Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you so much for stopping by the Freak Show, and I will see you later. Later.